There are plenty of cell phone features nowadays. For goodness sakes, our cell phones can do everything but cook and clean the house. We're going to hit on some of the basic ones, starting with texting. There are good reasons why you'd want to learn how to text. For one thing, texting gets a better signal than voice calls. So for example, if you're in a place that you're not able to make a phone call, you might still be able to send a text message. This is especially valuable during the storm or other emergency situations that the cell phone towers may be down, but the text messages are still going through. Also, if you're in a quiet situation, texting is a little more polite, so you're not talking to someone out loud on the phone. And finally, if you have kids, kids text. I have three kids at home. I can call them on their phones, and they're never going to answer, but if I send them a text, they're right there with it. I guess it's a little less embarrassing to kind of shoot off a message to mom or dad than to say it out loud. So let's talk about how to text. If you happen to have a phone with a full keyboard, whether it's a touch screen or a keyboard type, texting is very simple. On this phone, you'll see I have a whole keyboard here, and I can just type in my message with no problem. It gets a little more difficult if you have a traditional phone that has just a number pad. This type of phone is slower to text, but it can be done. And here are some tips on texting with a number pad. If you look at your number pad, you're going to see that there are letters associated with each number. If you want to send a text message, you need to hit that particular key over and over to get the correct letter. So let me get to my texting function here. And if I wanted to type the word hello, for example, my H is on the 4 key. I have to hit it twice. The first time it'll show me a G and then an H. Next I need an E, which is on the 3 key. When I first hit the 3 key, it gives me a D and then an E. Finally, I could throw in L's by hitting my 5 key three times for an L, and again, and my O is on the 6 key, which will require three hits while it goes M, N, O. It is much more s tedious and slower than with a full keyboard, but if you've got to get a text message out, it's better than nothing. Just be aware that texting does cost more if you have a contract plan. Generally, it's about 15 cents a text, unless you have an unlimited texting plan. And on a side note, I might recommend that. The first time I gave my daughter a cell phone, I didn't have unlimited texting. They sold me a plan for $5 a month for the first 300 texts. I thought, wow, 300 texts, that'll last us a month. It lasted us three days until they called back and said, you better get the unlimited plan. So just keep that in mind. There are some shortcuts when you're texting. I'll call them the three A's, autocorrect, autocomplete, and acronyms. If you've ever been texting and you spell something incorrectly and the phone fixes it for you, that's autocorrect. However, sometimes the phone doesn't fix it quite the way you wanted it to be fixed. They might think you meant something else. So you might want to take a good look at your text before you send it. Autocomplete is a feature many phones have that you would type the beginning of the word and they're going to fill in the rest of the word based on what they think you are going to say. Now, if you're saying things such as, I'll be home in 10 minutes, it might be fine. If you're saying things a little off the beaten track, it might be a little odd. And finally, acronyms or shortened forms. Very few people text full words, especially if they have one of those phones that they've got to hit it over and over, so there are shortened forms of all of the words. I have here a little chart of some of the most popular ones, which of course I got by asking my children, who know all about texting. LOL means laugh out loud. Your BFF is your best friend forever. TTYL if you're going to talk to somebody later. And by the way, BTW saves you a lot of words. So here are some things to look at. OMG, oh my gosh. BRB, be right back. I thought an ATM was a machine to get money, but evidently it means at the moment. And you could also add smiley faces, sad faces. I'm told this is a heart, but I think it looks a little like an ice cream cone that fell down. And if you put little parentheses around something, 
it means you're giving somebody a lot of hugs. So if you want to look a little more cutting edge than writing full words, try out some of our texting acronyms. Another feature lots of cell phones have nowadays is GPS, and it also goes along with geotagging. GPS is great. If you have your phone, you can find anything. Instead of using the car GPS, you probably have your phone with you at all times. Of course, please do not drive while looking at the phone GPS feature. There are some other things besides finding where to go. The GPS feature can also locate a lost phone or a lost person. There are services now that you would pay a monthly fee to so that if your phone should become lost or stolen, you would be able to go to the computer and you would see a map showing exactly where your phone is. This also works if you have children or young adults that you want to know where they are. You can set up a monthly feature that anytime you're not sure where they are, you might not know where they are, but you certainly will know where their phones are. And most young people, the phone is in their hand. However, there is something to be aware of, and this has recently come out, is that pictures taken with a cell phone are also GPS tagged, meaning somebody looking at that picture would be able to tell exactly where the picture is taken. Now, this might not be a problem if you're tagging a picture on Facebook and it says, here we are on the beach. That might not be an issue. But if you're posting pictures of children and you would never in a million years post your home address just by taking a picture in your living room, you just did. Because the picture is geotagged with your exact address. This is probably something that you don't want when you're taking pictures, especially of children. If you want to disable this feature, I'm going to show you here on this iPhone and other phones are similar. If I go to settings, you'll see I have location services. And right now, there are different applications that will use those location services. Now, it's very convenient for me to have location services for my map function, but right here you'll see I have my camera. That's location services on, location services off, so that my pictures can't be geotagged. And finally, I'm sure you've heard the word apps before. Apps are applications, all of these different types of programs that can run on your phone. Whether you have an iPhone, a Droid, a Blackberry, whatever type of phone you have, they have an app store that you can access right there through the phone and purchase or even download for free many different types of apps. So I have here the technically speaking top free apps, the ones I can't get through a day with. First of all, my map app. I use maps every single day, not just to find some place, but it's also combined with traffic. If you look at this picture, you'll see that some of the roads are green, some are yellow, and some are red. The green ones mean they have no traffic. Red or yellow is a problem. So before I'm going to leave the house, I'm definitely going to avoid those red ones. I think this is the most used app on my phone. Another great app is the Google app. The Google app is convenient not just for looking things up, but it also has a voice activation feature so you can find something. I'm going to press this little microphone here. Dunkin Donuts. And instantly, I'm going to get a map showing me where the nearest Dunkin Donuts is. I can say any term I want, and they're going to find it instantly for me. Boy, does that come in handy. Another great app that I have, which was also free, is called Red Laser. And there are other shopping apps that are similar. What I'm going to do is take any product that has a barcode. And if I shine my phone on the barcode, They're going to instantly tell me what the product was that I scanned, the off-clip mosquito repellent, and they're also going to tell me all of the different places I can go and buy it and what price. So if I'm standing in one store and I find out, you know, I could, I could save $1.50 if I go someplace else, 
they'll instantly show me a map how to get there. That'll come in handy. The flashlight feature was probably the app I used the most when we had no power. Here we go. I flip on that, and I have a flashlight. Simple, and it was free. This app is called Dropbox, another free app. And here it is on my screen. The Dropbox app actually is filled with folders and files. And it's synced to my computer at home. So if I need a file that's on my computer, it's actually right here on my phone. And if I edit the one at home, it'll also be edited on my phone. It is a wonderful networking system. You've probably heard of something called cloud computing, and this is it. The files aren't really on the phone. They're on a server or a supercomputer someplace else, but I can access them through Dropbox. And finally, I couldn't possibly have my top free apps without my top free game. Right now, it's Words with Friends. It's a free app that you can play Scrabble. I think I'm playing about 16 different games of Scrabble with friends of mine right now on Words with Friends. So all of these apps are free. They're available for iPhones, Droids, Blackberries, Windows phones. Just go to the App Store and check it out and have fun.